Uh, oops, uh, just give me a moment. Oh. Okay, somewhere my this tab moved and my alignment went off. Okay, so yeah, um, very quickly. So we, where, where I start is normally by clarifying that open learning, unschooling, homeschooling are just terms. So they don't, don't get lost in those terms. Some people use this term, some people use that term. The idea is more of this continuum that you see at the top, the red band, that on one end is the complete open completely no structured no curriculum and on other end is totally structured somewhat similar to what schools and colleges do but most of us who are in the open learning journey are they we move we move around along this continuum based on what the child is uh, uh, you know kind of needing or what the family is wanting and so on so you can be at one time very open, then you can move into little structure, then you may join something, then you may again leave and so on and so forth. So the name is not important. What the realization that we are living a life of options and choices, and that's what is really, really what it is all about. Yeah. So uh, where we started our journey was by asking this question, what's the purpose of education? And somehow it appeared to us that the rest of, uh, meaning most of the conventional world is more, uh, the education world, I meant, is more thinking in terms of career, jobs, so uh, earning, uh, you know, learning was about all about earning, and which is something which we didn't really uh, connect to. For us, uh, you know, you let's put it this way, the, that, that it's about living. And if it's about living, uh, then education and living actually become synonymous. So we, we are saying, hey, learning is no different from education. Uh, learning and education are no different from living. So that, that's how we looked at it. And uh, what we also realized as we worked with children, so we started being with children uh, from almost around 1999, 2000. And one of the things that we realized very soon was each child was a kind of a leader of self. And, and, and that is what really took us uh, with uh, with a lot of enthusiasm, you know, it infused that enthusiasm in us because we suddenly realized, ah, we are jobless, we are redundant, we don't, we are not required. What they, what is really required is to give them the space to actually lead themselves, and then they can do lots of different things. Yes, we are required in many different ways. We have roles to play, but not to lead them, but to let them lead themselves. And when we looked at it that way, then four thoughts came to us. And that is uh, the thought number one is that we don't need to bind the child with any curriculum. The child can literally uh, decide what to learn, when to learn. Uh, and not just what to learn, but also how to learn. We don't have to go ahead, you know, fix things and start teaching the child. The child wants teaching, the child will figure out, ask for it, go to a teacher or maybe a peer, or, or maybe just a resource, a YouTube or, or whatever, a course or something like that. We also realized if you, if you put together the first two thoughts of no, no need, to, meaning the child deciding what and the child deciding how, then the child should also be able to self-reflect, self-assess and kind of move ahead and also take feedback of people around, especially the parents and the other people, uh, significant people in the child's life. And finally, it led us to this thought that, hey, um, we don't need to um, you know, impose school or college or degrees because that is just one route. Nothing wrong with that route if anybody wants to take that route. But there are so many other options for one to grow in any field. Uh, and one of the most beautiful is just by doing stuff in that field, you know, simply by enjoying that. Right. So uh, I've just added a few, uh, few slides from, from before, um, uh, which are basically addressing these common questions. Uh, I don't want you to bother with this slide too much. These are just the broad category of questions that we get when we, uh, you know, uh, when we do these kind of meetups. So I, I'll run you through some of these questions so just to get the tone just to get set the, I'm not going to read everything or I'm not even expecting that you read everything. Uh, but the idea is, hey, first of all, why, why open learning? 
Well, there are lots of points and these points were actually collected from a group of people who were attending a session like this. Uh, you can choose what is your reason. Some people say no pressure. Some people say lots of options and opportunities. Some people say, hey, I can lead. <clears throat> I can grow by my instincts, my, my interests, my talents. I don't have to get stuck in one particular way. Uh, some people do it because then we can live and learn as a family. So, so many reasons to, to do. Uh, <clears throat> similarly, uh, uh, yeah, one of the core reasons is that we realize that the child is the leader. So why not let the child lead? Uh, a lot of people ask, hey, what kind of learning, what kind of curriculum? I think that's the base. That's the whole fun of open learning, that it's as open as the world. Uh, one can literally learn anything and everything, uh, whatever. Uh, everything is important. Yeah, meaning whether when somebody is doing uh, embroidery, whether somebody is doing uh, gymnastics, whether somebody is doing cooking, everything is so beautiful in this world. So why call something as academics or subjects? Why can't just open everything and let the child learn what the child wants to learn or do in life for that matter? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so there is no one thing, the curriculum or the learning or the set of things, skills that somebody wants to do kind of evolves uh, as the things goes on. Yeah. In fact, we call it the whole world is our learning map and we see everything that is available uh, kind of is, is like learning, worth learning. Yeah, That's the beauty of open learning. That's the excitement of open learning. Uh, <clears throat> uh, a lot of people ask about resources, support. Hey, where will we get this? So we feel that, hey, resources, people, exposures, options are all available all around we just have to look outside we think when we think about learning typical person thinks about a workshop you know if i have to learn calligraphy today people will type a calligraphy workshop but calligraphy workshop is one option there's so many other options one can just buy a book and try one can watch a youtube video one can just go to a neighbor who does calligraphy ask around hey who does that one can see a calligraphy on a poster or a hoarding and then try to just copy it and so on so there are so many so we consider the whole world as a resource. We keep telling each child <clears throat> that, hey, you just decide what you want to learn. Everything else will fall into place because that's that's what we have realized. Yeah, uh, When we want to learn something, everything else kind, kind of starts uh, happening together. Uh, some people also think that, oh, am I equipped as a family, as a parent? Can I, can I bring in that kind of uh, environment? Can I... Uh, so uh, that, that is the beauty of open learning, that it's a co-creation, which means that the whole family comes in, all signs of, uh, of you know, personalities, perspectives comes in. The whole thing is a very, very evolving, very organic in nature. Some, some plan quite a lot, some don't plan at all. Some have very clear schedules, some don't have very clear schedules. Uh, a lot of people experiment, explore, and so on. So as it's a, it's a very co-evolving environment, which is why we say everybody is is uh, already suited for open learning. As some of you were saying in your uh, uh, introduction that you are new to open learning. Well, we disagree. You are not new to open learning. First of all, when you were born, you did open learning. First few years of your life, there was nobody really teaching. You're just exploring the world however you want to. And let's assume you joined a school or a college, even then, whenever you had holidays, be it a weekend or a month on holidays, uh, you were open learning. And now that you are typically out of school or college, all of us are open learning. We're just deciding what we want to learn, what we want to do in our life. We are learning the required skills and things and, and so on and so forth. I'm sure everybody here is still learning in their life, right? So, um, so it's not, so, so no, nobody's new to open learning. You're all already experienced. If you are 30 years old, you have 30 years of experience. Uh, it's just that you, uh, we have this tendency to lean on a wall called, called the conventional system or school or college. And we think that's the only way to build ourselves. But we need not lean on that wall. We can, we can just keep on creating, co-creating actually. Um, there are obvious questions about exams, board, college, career, jobs and stuff like that. Uh, again, we think that uh, there are so many options available and, and, and the moment you start thinking this way, then even more options open. So one can one can go to 10th health and go to college. That's one option. 
uh, one need not do that and one can just be self-employed or, or be an entrepreneur or do freelancing or even in jobs, we can present our portfolios and, and get jobs, not because we got a degree, but because we have done something which is worthwhile. And uh, yeah, so these are the many options that are there. Um, oh, people also sometimes have little doubts about social skills, life skills. So we feel uh, open learning, the social skills are very wide because you interact with all ages on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we, you also interact a lot with uh, the real world. So that's that's the real fun. You know, you're out there uh, wherever you want to. You may just go and uh, I know Preeti's daughter went and interned with a with a vegetable seller down the road. I, I think that that's the fun of learning. You know, you're learning on the road kind of thing. Um, what's the role of facilitator? Well, uh, uh, the whole idea is that we are there together. I think that's the real one. Yeah, we, we believe we are companions and then rest evolves, I think. We, once we support each other, uh, everything comes out as options. So I'm running through these slides. If you want to read them, obviously, these slides will be available. I'll, I'll make it available to you. It's there also on the website. I'll share the link with you, right? Um, we also realize that uh, the the beauty of uh, of life is that everything that is looks like a problem is actually an opportunity to learn. And I'm just taking a screenshot from the Life of Pi movie where a, a tiger in the boat looks like a big problem, but that's an opportunity for. And he, the 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 hero of this novel, actually acknowledges at the end that I I don't think I would have survived without the tiger in the boat. So the what looked like a problem actually help them survive so so that that's okay so let me summarize i've taken today more time than normal because i've added more slides so to summarize this is how we look at an open learning journey typically when children are younger they start with a lot of exposure they get to see feel do explore different things and then they start choosing based on their interests oh i i don't i like to do clay more no i, I, I like to play football more uh, i like music more so they start exploring a different interest of theirs and as they grow, grow older, they may want to get into expertise on a particular field. They may say, I want to, I want to go deep into this. And that's when they start developing expertise uh, by various ways, by doing work, by becoming an apprentice or intern, internships and so on. Lots of things. And once they get enough expertise, they are ready for the world of earning, which is the enterprise. So that's typically a journey. Um, in terms of... Uh, Arohi, Arohi takes this concept and uh, evolves it into, uh, or rather revolves it into a, a, a whole lot of families who are who join together and become a community. So Arohi is just a community of a lot of families doing open learning who are together, who, sh who are together in, in lot many ways. Uh, obviously, one way is by connecting based on common interests. So a child or a, another child or another parent, whoever is interested in one thing, will join hands and, and kind of do some, explore that, do something together, collaborate, or even, even support, mentor, coach each other. So that's what Arohi is. It's just a community um, to kind of co-live together. Yep, that's the whole idea. Um, we have two campuses. Uh, one is obviously a physical campus, which is about 60 kilometers from Bangalore. Uh, it's in a village setting where you can come and stay and live. And uh, the other is uh, an online campus, which is a very happening, vibrant place where all day, literally six days a week, a lot of different action keeps hang happening, connecting families from all across the country, even some from abroad. Right. So what I can tell you and what I think Preeti was saying in her introduction that it's not about that open learning is easier or tougher or whatever, but it's, uh, it's, it's equally challenging perhaps, but it's a lot of fun. That's at least how we see it. Yeah. So that's my quick spiel or rather a quick uh, introduction to open learning and briefly about ROE. So I'll stop sharing now and invite all of you to come on video and audio and ask questions and share your thoughts. We have a few more people who joined in, so that's nice. Yeah, the floor is open.
So anybody can start with any question. Today's uh, every every week we give it a theme because we have been doing this for more than now almost two and a half years every Saturday. So we just to add flavor to it, we give it a theme. Today's theme is uh, the ch the child being leader uh, of self. So that's the theme. So you can have specific questions about that, or you can have any other questions. Let's start with questions more about open learning. And if you have Arohi specific questions, we can come to it a little later, maybe around, let's say, six o'clock. So let's at least give about half an hour for questions on, on open learning. And around six, we can start more questions on um, Arohi. Uh, this, uh, these sessions continue till 6.30. Uh, so we have about an hour to chit chat. Yeah. Uh, I Ritesh here. Can I start? Yes, please, Ritesh. Okay, uh, I don't know if it's uh, I mean it will be a part of this uh, topic, but just uh, you know when we talk about open school and let's say we even do it, have how how because our parents are not in the, you know programmed to think in this direction, right? They always think it ha you have to go to school and you know get degrees and all the stuff or marks ten, twelve, whatever. How to manage the parents, like? What is it that we can tell them that's what we're trying to do with our kids? Did anybody face these kind of uh, questions? Okay. Who wants to answer that? Sandhya, Prana, Preeti, Vyavanjali, a lot yeah. of people from community. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, I'd like to answer. Like, uh, we have joined this open learning uh, thing since uh, last August. So, we too faced uh, such questions not only from our parents but relatives friends and all like uh, just we can first uh, explain that this is what the child wants actually and we are ready to uh, give them the opportunity the freedom uh, for them to choose uh, for themselves and they be sorry is this disturbing <laughs> no issues carry on <laughs> that's it okay and they being their uh, leader, like uh, like we like, we have to. The main concern is this: whether uh, the parents think it is, it is good for the kids or not. That is their main concern. Like we'll have to ensure that this is what the child wants, and this is what uh, is good for them. I think this is just a general thing, but it all depends on each uh, family and the uh, uh, thought of the parents and the kids. But other than that, if they intrude more, uh, then you just say, okay, that's it. Just listen to them and then leave it off. That's it. You don't need to answer. You know what you want uh, for your child and the child knows what it wants. So that's enough. Okay. I don't know if it works, but <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It's difficult, but eventually they'll accept it. We have faced the same thing. Uh, hi, uh, this is Ishita. Can I ask a question? Yeah, uh, sorry. I, I was just waiting if somebody else wants to respond to the oh, previous so question. Uh, Ishita, yes. just, just give us a few more. Uh, <clears throat> Preeti Pranav, uh, are you adding anything, Anjali? Yeah, so uh, here, uh, basically what I feel, Ritesh, is uh, who is the learner and who's... Um, uh, so basically, the child is the learner, the child is the leader, the child has to do everything. So why are we thinking so much about how I feel as parent and how grandparents will feel? You know, uh, it is more about child's life. So uh, if the child is enjoying that and child is happy with it, then uh, like uh, that hierarchy of people in, uh, you know, um, the, I, I think what, when you said that, uh, is it possible? I don't think so. Then I was rethinking and uh, understanding your side also. So maybe a lot of discussion in the family would uh, make a difference. Yeah, I, I will plus one to that, that... Uh... To me, uh, it's not about convincing anybody. In fact, if somebody has a different view, somebody has a different concern, I would say, great, awesome. They're concerned about us. Isn't that beautiful? And then we will engage into as many conversations 
on daily basis, weekly basis, however frequency, whatever comes, uh, the more the merrier. Uh, because we are not trying to convince anybody, we're not trying to prove anything, but we are trying to co-evolve, co-create as a family. And if it's a larger family, more the merrier. Now we are a community. We have, we have 30, 40 families. So now even more discussion. So the, even different point of view. And, and that's the beauty of it. So yeah, I, I see uh, any anybody's, any relatives, any neighbors, any friends, any grandparents concern is very welcome. Uh, and just, just include them in the whole co-creation of life. Oh yeah, that helps. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah, Ishita. Yeah, I think we can take your question. Thanks. Right. So I think uh, one of the slides that has really uh, had had a deep impression was the sole exposure to enterprise one. Because in the conventional way, what we do is we tell the child, you think of a career, what would you want to be when you grow up? And mm -hmm. then you work towards it. So I like this idea of uh, doing a lot of internships at different places and then getting a flavor of everything and then deciding whether something works or not. But my question is, uh, how do you get uh, access to all these internships? So for example, if the child says, I think I want to be a veterinarian when I grow up, how, do, how can she be given access? And at what age can she be given access uh, to an internship with a vet? So she gets a flavor very quickly of whether that's for her or not. And she works backwards from it. Yeah. So, so specific to the example that you gave, we have a child called Skanda. He's now 17, no, 16, I think. But when he was 12, he was doing an internship with an organization called Prani. And he was there with, the, with them for about six months. And Prani is a, uh, is a rescue, a animal rescue center. So they have a team of vets and they have a team of animal care people and they, they rescue wild animals who have been either injured or are in captive and then they yeah obviously treat them and all that so uh, yeah why not I mean you see the moment you want to do something like that you start researching uh, and you get these places so I'm just giving you since you raised that example I'm giving you that example and he actually did it there and he thoroughly enjoyed he used to teach us a lot of things of how to do this, how to handle a rat and how to handle an eagle and how to handle this and so many things. So, right. so yeah. it's like you'll and, and, not, and not that he's in that line now, he's, he's, he's moved away from there and he's moved into something else. Right, so basically you're saying once you've decided you're doing it, the options will open up themselves because oh, there yes. are people oh, yes. who are open to taking children. Because it's normally perceived as, again, there are these labor laws. You see, you can't employ a child who's too young. But it's not. So are our organizations are willing to take on children? And oh, yes. Um, more than willing to take. Okay. Good. Good to know that. In fact, the, as I said, more than willing because they, most of them are so excited. Wow. A child wants to do something like this. Cool. Come on. So the, the labor laws does not prohibit a child from going into a... Um, into an internship, you don't. You, they don't earn anything. It's not a labor. They are not doing labor there. They are more there, uh, learning, seeing, observing, and obviously giving a helping hand wherever they can. Uh, obviously, organizations which are doing that kind of work will also take care of the safety. How? How? At what age do so? I can understand 15, 16 year olds doing internships, but what does a ten year old do typically? Uh, an open school like yeah, ten year old. I think what Preeti can share. A nine year old was doing something. <laughs> so uh, when we say internship, then maybe uh, internship, uh, you know, comes with uh, a lot of baggage of only doing with some big brands and some big organizations where. You know, so if that is the thing that we have in our minds, then um, I don't know. But uh, if you just go out there down your street and find out people who are interested in what your child is interested in, and you just ask them if my child can come and learn at your place, then everybody would be happy. My daughter, she's nine year old and she did, uh, she learned with vegetable vendors and fruit vendors and they were more than happy to ask uh, like, call her and make her sit there and do things what they do and today she is in Bangalore and those guys are missing her most when I go <laughs> for my walks they ask her every day where is Mishti so like that means when these kind of relationships and 
bonding happens, then everything is possible. Thanks. Yeah, I, I hope you get the idea. I mean, I can give you hundreds of such examples of what all different children have done in all the age groups. But again, I think let's not get bound by the age. Open learning just throws away this whole age thing. And suddenly all of us from 0 to 99 become open learners. And we become learners more importantly. And we realize, oh, all of us can do so many interesting things. Let's say in some place you have a concern that your child may not be able to, you know, it's not suitable in some way you feel. Go ahead, you also intern there. So both of you intern. Why not? And the internship doesn't is not the only word. You can intern, you can be an apprentice, you can do volunteering. A lot mm -hmm. of volunteering opportunities are more than welcomed by organizations. Correct. Makes sense. Thanks. Okay, more questions, more thoughts. Uh, I just um, wanted to add. Uh, go ahead, Sandhya. Yeah, I just wanted then to add one picture. more. Yeah, one more thought, like uh, that uh, regarding the age for uh, uh, getting into the practice. That is also decided by the kid only. Like if she reads her books or watches videos and all, if she's okay with it, she'll say, okay, I am I want to learn it practically. Like say one day she's going, she's observing and she doesn't want to do it. And she says, okay, no, no, I don't want to do it now. Practically, let me read it. Let me go through all these things. She'll decide. So whether she's 10 years old or 8 years old or whether 17 years old, she'll decide like when she wants to do it practically. So it won't be a problem for us. Yeah, Apeksha, were you asking a question? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah. Do you have kids of, uh, like, my kids are four years and one and a half year old. So, like, most of the time I, I need to su supervise them. I can't even leave them on their own. So, how does it happen with kids of that age? And how does what happen with kids of that age? I'm, as in uh, learning or them working because uh, I have to be with them. Uh, sure. Like in a school environment, uh, there is somebody to look after them. There's a structured, uh, you know, uh, system and setup. Um, yeah, so I, I guess first clarification that we are not a school. So nothing that happens in school or the way the schools is structured or the, even the way the school thinks, we don't think like that. We are a community. We are not a community of children. Neither we are a community for children. We are just a community, period, of all the adults and all the children thrown in. So which means the first community the child has is the child's family. So that, that, that community is by default the first community. And then there are many more people around, much like how a joint family would have. So yeah, when the child is, wherever the child is, the child will interact, work, do things with whoever is around the child. And everybody in the, in the child's environment is, is both uh, uh, an environment, a resource, a friend, uh, a challenger, a facilitator, a troublemaker, uh, and so on. And by everyone, and not just for the child, for the for me also, everybody is, plays the same role. So I guess, uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a very maybe a different way to look at it because we are, if if you are looking at the school and then comparing it, it may not work out that way, right? Because this is not nothing to do with schooling. This is to do with living first, and as we as we all say, we live first in a family. And then we'll, the family increases with relatives and friends and neighbors and so on and so forth. So that's exactly how we are. Got it. Thanks. Pranav, you want to add something to that?
His mic is not working. Uh, okay. Okay, we, we'll wait for his mic to work. No worries. As in when Pranav can get his mic to work. Others, if you have a thought or a question, uh, please feel free to share or ask. Hi, uh, this is Gopika. Can I ask sure. something? Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, as I have told uh, in the uh, introduction, like I'm new to this and just uh, starting uh, with uh, trying as many information, trying to get as many information as possible and then uh, in, you know, practice it. So currently my daughter is going to a conventional type of schooling. She sure. has uh, just seven years old. So uh, last two years, she has been in the regular school in two to three years. Um, and right now, when I wanted to uh, do the transition, when I wanted to move away from that uh, into this open learning, uh, I have a lot of questions and confusions, which I think I can slowly, being in the process, I can get an answer. But sure. just to start with, from the experience uh, or the already in open learning uh, parent, I would like to know why the first time when you were starting, especially if you have moved from regular schooling to this open learning, because she already had got some experience of this uh, regular schooling. So uh, what should be the, the preparatory side? Which what, what should I take as a starter? Since uh, just think that I have a lot of confusions, that's why that maybe my mind is not clear that I am, that's why I'm asking this question, but is there anything like a preparatory phase I would, I, I would have to do? or how to start with as a whole um, when we move from this uh, regular schooling uh, to make that transition smooth um, or is there anything I should do as such? If, if any parent can uh, have gone through it, they can, they can just give me an idea because that is what I am right now and like in a, in a confused state because I somehow to bring, to bring that transition that I'm not uh, getting that uh, confidence on what to start, how to start. Uh, yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. This is from my perspective and my opinion. Uh, like if the kid is ready to go for open learning, you don't need any preparatory phase at all. The transition will be automatic. Okay. Like if this is what you want, then the question you're asking might be uh, valid. But if this is what the, even the kid also wants, then if you just have a discussion and conversation, that the, itself will be the preparatory. Yeah, yeah. This is so from that, my point of view. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So my situation is like that. Initially. Um, uh, when we were in that uh, online learning process in the last one or two years, she was like she wanted to go to school to meet her friends, basically on that social side. But once she started going in the last couple of months, she started showing like, you know, I'm not very happy what is happening there. And so I don't know if it is just a small uh, one or two incidents which happened there or is it like she, because kids, we don't know, right? But at every moment, they'll have different thoughts. So I don't know whether it is a small phase of like small, uh, small duration, uh, which she has with this uh, uh, experience or with this thought, but these days she says she doesn't want to continue that. So I am, I am confused like whether I should go with that, what she says right now, or should I wait some more time and then give her some more time to know, you know take some decision and then take you know, a little later. So that confusion is also there or, uh, or should I right away you know, stop like stop the conventional you know, schooling method and uh, give her that space to enjoy her own way of learning? Uh, so that's my confusion. I hope I made sense. Uh, I'll just share my experience. I don't yeah. know whether it might help. Like even my no. daughter, like uh, we shifted from Hyderabad, uh, mm. like just before a few uh, six or seven months before the COVID. So she started a new school just uh, seven months after the COVID started and completely everything went online. So after that, a few months, she started saying that I don't like this. I don't like this type of thing. I don't like to learn like that. We thought that, okay, since it's online, she doesn't go to school. She doesn't meet her friends. So that's what, that's why she's saying all those things. 
I and my husband kept on insisting that once you go to the school, start going to the school, everything is going to be okay. You will meet new people, you meet your friends, you meet your teachers and all. We kept on saying that again and again and again. This all, this went for a year. Uh, and uh, the next academic year started. Then also she started insisting, I don't want to go to school. Even if it opens, uh, the school uh, opens, I won't like it. I don't like this. I don't like this. Then only we realized that she didn't like the system itself. Yeah. If she was uh, starting like, why should I learn all those subjects? I don't, I'm not interested in that. Why should mm -hmm. I learn that? I like this subject only. I like this topic only, but I'm not able to learn that. I'm not able mm -hmm. to explore that. So she started saying all those things and she started convincing us. Then only we realized, okay, the school, uh, like whether it's online or offline, is not uh, the issue here. The system itself is not suitable for her. So that's yeah. that's when, so like almost uh, it took about a year for us to, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, like uh, she convinced us. And within, after uh, we realized and she convinced us, and within uh, mm -hmm. two months, uh, we just uh, took her out of the conventional schooling and we, um, joined in the ROC. So this oh, is my okay. experience. You might get anything uh, from me. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I think more or less it's the same phase which I'm also right now going through. Uh, so just uh, how old is uh, your daughter? Like now, like when she like had when, that, uh, when she was, I uh, think she was 12 years. 12 years. Mm -hmm. So do like we have from, uh, anything oh. like this? My daughter is just seven. So is there, is there anything like it is too early to make a decision for herself? Is there anything like that? I'm just confused. Uh, Pranav, I don't think Pranav can answer because uh, I think they started. Uh, am, I, am, I, <laughs> am I audible here? Uh, okay. Yes, yes, so yes, our, 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 yeah, yeah, our daughter was uh, seven when it was March 2020 uh, when Prime Minister appeared on the screen and you know the country was in the lockdown. Um, mm -hmm. So she she did one week one month of you know online schooling, and uh, uh, she th felt like you know uh, this is something which I don't want to do. Okay. So she was clear about it, and as as we just the topic of the day is kind of you know being child being the leader. So first you have to believe in the child in a way. Basically, the child can take that decision for you know herself or you know himself. Mm -hmm. So so we believed in her. We had that discussion. A proper elaborate discussion and you know uh, uh ensure okay, you know she's clear about what she's talking and and there was an environment also uh which you know uh, she, she was exposed to uh you know because the, there are there are people whom you wish to meet and there were homeschoolers open open learners and and mm -hmm. she used to interact with them as well so after one okay. month of this kind of online schooling she was clear that i don't want to this i don't want to do this kind of schooling and so mm -hmm. the uh, we as a family kind of sat and said okay, okay fine uh, let's explore this other alternative path. Worst case, what will happen? Probably she'll feel miss out on a year or something. Yeah. But uh, okay. it's a choice that she's taking and every yeah. choice has a consequence. So that's fair enough. And as a family, yeah. we are ready to take that call. So that was the only okay. thought we had at that point in time. And we, we just took a plunge into this. And it's been two years and whatever number of years since then. And uh, she, we have never looked back and it's, she's happy doing it. In fact, she's now at Arohi. We are at home. Uh, we stay at Bombay. Uh, she's in Bangalore right now with Ratnesh Shadidi and the cam at the campus. So she loves doing it far more, and she's far more involved into it. So, so you have to believe in the child first. Uh, and in terms of preparatory thing, I don't think there is any preparatory thing as such needed. But of course, you can as as a, as a family, you can make that effort. You know, engage with uh, the people in this community, or you know, uh, maybe Arohi or uh, other other homeschoolers or unschoolers or open learners in your uh, you know surrounding. So child gets a hang of it, and then you as a family get a hang of it, and you all have to work together towards it. So it's not like a child ne bola hai, toh child ka headache hai, mera headache nahi hai. We all have to work together towards it. So as a family, yeah. you have to be there. So that's the way I think we can look at it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, like it is uh, like that much me a confidence. Yeah, please go on. Yeah, like, but we had a lot of discussions, lots and lots mm -hmm. of discussions. I think that is very important. Like mm -hmm. she has to understand like this is what is open learning. So this is what uh, the conventional learning will be when she goes mm -hmm. out. 
after the 12th. So uh, the open learning is a continuous process. All those things, uh, we had lots of discussions with her. And we also told her, like, uh, you can explore what are the opportunities for open learners are there. So she, of course, she didn't go through it fully, but she made some research by herself, mm -hmm. like, okay, I look at it. We just shared some websites and all those things. So the discussion part is very important, I think, because uh, she also has to understand it. So and so it's going to happen because uh, she will be responsible for her own learning after this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when, when you discuss, was there any uh, like any experience given in this open learning first and then you got a taste of both and then you decided? Was it that way or? Yeah, just she had, we both had an experience of one week staying ah, at the yeah, campus. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. This is in, in a way, this uh, gave my, you know, the answer I, what I want, I got this. It's, it's, it's good. I mean, it's nice talking to all of you. My confidence level also has increased a lot. Thank you so much. And sorry if I have taken more time than this. <laughs> yeah. And Gopika, yeah. I would recommend a film, uh, Summer Hill. Uh, it's it's uh -huh. you know, normally I tell this to all the parents you know who are probably just taking a step towards yeah. this. So Summer Hill is a movie you will get it uh, on YouTube and, and if you go on Vimeo, you will get the subtitles as well. So probably you can look at that. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. I'll have a look. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah, that's all from my side. That's nice. Thank you. Uh, more questions, more thoughts. Uh, I, I again, I'm just reinforcing the key point that uh, both Pranav and Sandhya said was that we need to have more discussions, more thinking through. Uh, somehow, I I personally think it's not about that. Oh, because I'm having, because child is having a an issue with the school. Let's let's go to open learning. I, I don't think it's like that. It's not like open learning is a solution to a bad schooling experience. I, I don't see it that way. I, I think one has to understand uh, oneself and uh, as a family, understand what family wants and then understand what is open learning. So this that is through discussions uh, and then see how is this something exciting or interesting enough? And as Pranav was saying, you can always try it out. You can try it out for a month, two months, three months, take a break from whatever school. Uh, most schools will not mind you joining back, even if they mind join another school, if that is what uh, your concern is. Uh, but the, the idea is that, yeah, uh, go for a... Uh, so I, I, I joke with people, that, you know, the, the way, if you want to, um, you know, um, the prepare for open learning, buy a pair of swimming trunks and jump into the pool. That's the only way, right? Uh, just because we have been living in air doesn't mean that we can't enjoy being inside water <laughs> or the other way around. So that's the preparation, you know. Don't forget to buy the swimming trunks. <laughs> yeah, Preeti. So uh, just to add to what uh, Ratnesh, you said, that uh, even today, uh, like when uh, Prana was talking about our daughter, so even today, uh, we have very healthy discussions around this topic. And even today, the doors are open for her to decide if she, even today, after two and a, more than two, two and a half years of open learning that she's been into, even today, the doors are open for her to decide even if she wants to go for schooling, conventional schooling. So there is nothing like... Uh, you know this way or that way it is like everything is open whatever the child decides that is the uh, most important yeah when you when you do open learning there's no question of doors Preeti. you knock down the walls you knock down the roof everything is open <laughs> you can walk in any direction and that direction is good enough Um, can I, I have another, not a question, more of a comment. I don't know, it's uh, somewhere in between. Uh, can I go ahead? Because I have sure, 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 sure. Uh, the, this is very open, so please, you don't have to ask again and again. Just go ahead with your thoughts and questions. Everything is welcome. And everybody is welcome. 
So one point, I'm not sure I totally, uh, at least I know in theory, I don't uh, quite un relate to it, which is no assessments and no sort of no deadline, no assessments, because uh, just because, I mean, I think today I'm, a, I'm really an open learner. I've discovered the love for learning after coming out of college and school, but I am a lazy person. So if I, uh, I feel it's good to have somebody, it's good to know that other people are watching you and, and set some goals and meet those goals and go through some kind of an assessment to know that there is a certain progress happening in whatever is the area of interest. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, that line sort of did not resonate with me that no assessments or no imposed uh, pressures of that kind. Uh, any thoughts on why not do that? And how do, how do, how do you make sure that the open learner cons consistently keeps evolving even with no external uh, expectations? Who is stopping you to take assessment? Do assessment on your own <laughs> about your own learning. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's also a personal decision is what you're saying. The child, him or herself will be willing to do assessment. Like she will be willing to take assessment by herself. Like if she's interested in a field, no pressure is needed or no external push is needed. So the assessment is like one sort of writing or oral is one sort of thing. Like the many ways are there, whether uh, there is uh, like to see whether there's progress or not. There are many other ways. We can see in uh, their daily activities, their daily work, we can see. And the child it's, uh, herself might ask, like, I want this one. I want the next level thing. I want the next level thing. So that itself will show what has progressed. Okay. Thanks. Uh, just to add a uh, assessment part, uh, here we talk more of reflection. So uh, while you are you know, doing something or you're passionate about it and you're working towards it, uh, it doesn't necessarily demand external assessment, but the person can always reflect upon it and you know think about you know where, where do I stand? What do I, what am I doing wrong? So, so, uh, so that 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 st it still happens. It's not that okay, the person is not uh, assessing this, uh, himself or not kind of getting feedback. And if the person even wants external feedback, the person go out and seek external feedback. Hey, okay, can you just you know tell me you know what where am I going wrong? So that is, but then it is not imposed or it is not kind of external. Uh, it's not like the likes that I get on the uh, get on the Facebook. Then only I'll uh, start drawing or then only I'll do certain photography. It's it's about my love for drawing or my love for you know photography. I'll just keep doing it. And likes, I and Nia, that's fine. Yeah, and uh, perhaps uh, we can also step back and and look at this whole idea of um, what should I call it of of achievements of success. You know, because I think uh, who is who is telling me what is success? Uh, if I have learned, uh, you know. A, but you have learned from A to F. Let's say, let's say, let's assume we are two are in the same field. Uh, are you more successful? Uh, am I less successful? Let's say I was within quotes lazy enough to only learn A, and you learn till F, and maybe Preeti learned till Z, right? She is a fast learner. Right? So does that mean that I am less? Am I less than others, uh, or you are less than Preeti, or Preeti is better? Uh, is that the only model? We call it rat race. And then we say, we don't like the word rat race, but then we start jumping into it. So it's also a question of introspecting. What do we want in life? Right? We, we, we seldom ask that question. We only look at the very set standard ways of knowing how somebody is successful. You know, I passed that exam. Is that success? If that is what you want to. I'll give you an example of my daughter. She started a business a few years back. And uh, she used to thoroughly enjoy it, whole day work on it, but she would always come and complain. And what was her complaint? I'm getting too many orders. I don't want too much earning. I don't want too much money. I, I, have to, I want to do so many other things. I, I want to do art also, and I want to do this also, and I want to do that also. So I will keep my business small so that I earn, and, and she's earning. 
but she doesn't want to expand it she doesn't want to grow it she just wants to enjoy it because she enjoys making things and enjoy making making products and enjoy connecting with her customers giving them free workshops on how they can only make the product themselves and so on and so forth so her perspective not just towards business but towards life towards happiness in fact to me is a lesson so as i said i am a fan of her also i am learning from her how one can look at one life at this age of 23 2022 20, 23 you know she's she's got that kind of thinking which i could have at that time i was in that sense so condition so i am saying open learning is also about being open to question yourself and question these set or or you can say these propagandaed uh, concepts of life right and see how else do i want to live so yeah if somebody wants to uh, you know say that am i good enough and uh, and compare or go ahead and get himself or herself tested fair enough that is that person's choice but otherwise yeah each one can see how how fast or how lazy i want to be and i guess all permutation combinations are fine right thank you no i was just thinking from the perspective of sometimes a little bit of external mm-hmm. observation also helps one get the best out of oneself it's not always comparative it's okay if somebody else is far better that's fine but have i done what i have the potential of doing in the area that i am interested in so from that perspective Uh, sure so the, 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 in the statement you said have i done right the interesting point is the child or whoever is the learner is is seeking more then it will automatically come then they can seek feedback from people whether it's through formal uh, tests or whether it's through informal feedback and conversations right thank you and ishita just to add you know if necessity is the mother of invention laziness is a father even i am very lazy so when the person is lazy he'll come up with different solutions or innovations how, how not to work or you know <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, uh, even i am very lazy person so you can ask my wife she will change in fact the <laughs> most successful person per se conventionally successful person that i've ever met in my life he had once said this that you absolutely have to have a lot of unproductive time to be really productive in something if you just constantly bombarding yourself trying to be productive you will end up becoming unproductive quite soon yeah makes sense um if i can add to uh, you know what uh, uh, santosh we lost your voice can you hear me yeah i think just just go ahead speak we'll see okay so i was saying that i understand the the question which is mm, we heard the first four words and then we lost it okay. it's not breaking it's totally going out okay is it any better now I mean, you'll have to speak little more <laughs> well, okay. let's see yeah all right so so uh, what i was saying is that uh, i uh, you know uh, got into same uh, uh, you know the, the, the same uh, kind of question which ishita has about assessments uh, and i would just like to share my little experience here uh, uh, so so what happened with my daughter is that she was going to a conventional school until last year and it is just that this this past 2 uh, 3 weeks that she is you know into open schooling or home schooling i would call it uh, so when we say assessments there can be two ways right one can be the continuous way of assessment and the second can be you know the the official conventional way of writing an exam and you know from a uh, from a organization and certifying you that you are particular you know you have studied so much so uh, what uh, what 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 i have seen ishita is that see there are a lot of resources like uh, if you see the presentation today uh, ratnesh added some points into it about uh, using nios or idcsc uh, uh, nios specifically has got periodic assessment so like for example 6th grade 8th grade 10th grade 12th grade you can give this exams uh, this is for the formal assessment what we can also do as parents is that we can have uh, continuous assessments 
so in my daughter's case what uh, you know uh, what she is doing now is she is studying at home all by herself and uh, you know once in a while say uh, you know once in two weeks or once a month she she is she is going to this uh, one one retired school teacher who lives close by and she has a chat with her for an hour so the teacher then tells her okay you know you you know should focus here should not focus here or see this or see not see this and that's how it's happening so it's like a sort of a you know a continuous assessment happening there and uh, we can also look at nios you know like i said the periodic assessments which happen uh, is scheduled and it's a certifying authority right right makes sense but self driven so one decides that i want to do that kind of an assessment or the family decides and then there are these external methods available and assessments um, from okay. available so no sorry somebody is speaking uh, i couldn't hear Okay. So uh, I have um, yeah. Anjali here. Yeah. Yes, Anjali. So recently, Arham has been interacting with the society children, and so they, he plays. He goes so assessment connecting to assessment. He assesses himself that child is going to the school and she learned uh, English writing, and she is younger than me. So he says to himself, he was saying, "I'm not able to write till now." So I said, "I was like, okay, just listen to us." So the beauty is that he is assessing himself, and now he is realizing realizing means he wants to write now. So he is choosing. Okay, I want to write it. That comparison happens by himself only because mm -hmm. they meet each other, they learn together, they play. So in playing also, he is coming up with that. Okay, it's not about conventional schooling, but ha, she is able to write. So why can't I write then? So I am also if I start doing it, so then I will also be able to do it then. so that's where i'm looking at okay so still assessment happening by himself then coming up with that okay i need to write now i need to learn how to write so that's where i'm looking from it so maybe it connects to that assessment part so hope so he is 7 years old and since 2 years he has been doing home schooling and we are connected with aruhi but if we have not visited the campus but still happening at home <laughs> yeah so, so um, anjali just to add to this like if we are connecting assessment with to assessment with only the uh, curriculum based uh, academic subject or something then maybe um, what even santosh was suggesting about and i can all that maybe that is okay that would be one way but how about if my daughter is interested in surfing how does she assess that on any uh, official uh, this thing uh, you know any of the curriculum based uh, system if say my daughter is uh, interested in um, skiing or uh, swimming anything over and above the basic curriculum structure so then Uh, all these things go out of picture. Then self-assessment and your self-drive brings you to that. That's what I wanted to convey. And Preeti, if I, if you allow me, if I add, let's say, emotions, and now forget children. <laughs> I'm talking about myself. How do I assess myself on? How do I understand and work with my emotions and with emotions of people who are near to dear and around me? now there is there is no exam no test no nothing that can help you perhaps uh, you know i i keep saying the amount of maths that i learned the amount of physics that i learned uh, if i count it as 100 out of that maybe 5 i am using in my day to day life i'm saying the amount of physics and maths and whatever else history geography civics i learned in my school but the amount of emotions i learned which was zero 
because nobody was working on the emotions at that time. They were not important. And I used that hundred all the time, day to day, every day with, with myself, with my spouse, with my children, with all the people around me. So you see, that's the funny part. <laughs> we tend to think of this is important and this is not important, but life it doesn't work like that. Uh, in life, anything can be important. If tomorrow you start uh, making lemonade, then making lemonade ability will be your, uh, uh, you know, you will need assessment on that, not on anything else. Right. Which is why we, we give a lot of importance on the whole idea of self reflection because that is something you can do in whichever field uh, you are in in whichever stage of your life you are whether you are a child or a parent or a grandparent self-reflection will be something that will always be required and that's the that's the real no I'm not saying it that's the real assessment I'm saying that's the lifelong assessment that one would one would need so yeah just to expand the topic of assessment. Thanks, Preeti. <laughs> I just want to share one story, which may take uh, two minutes if uh, we have that much time. Then quickly, can I share my story? Are you asking for permission? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from who? Okay, from the whole group. So whole group, please yeah. tell us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is about me, myself, learning about how to uh, self-assess and self-understand or self-realize my own likings or dislikings and uh, things uh, around it uh, rather than looking outside for appreciation or acknowledgement. You know, this is my learning uh, roughly one and a half years ago. Uh, I used to, I was doing one event in Arohi. Okay, I was conducting an event in Arohi and I was like all the time looking out for that acknowledgement. Oh, this now this Friday something will come. Oh, this Friday something they will say something. I will get some appreciation, something, something, and uh, nothing used to come. And only I used to get bashing. Some or the other way, I used to get bashing from from uh, you know uh, their side. So I was like, Kab, when will I get it? Was like that. And I just uh, did not give up because I knew that there is something hidden for me to learn here. Okay, I did not give up. And I just kept on doing that Friday event and I kept on doing just to understand what is there for me to learn here. Okay. And honestly, from there, what I learned and came out is everything that is important is what I like. It is not really important what others like, what others say about it, what others feel about it. It is only about me. If I'm enjoying the process, then everything is in my hand. And I can do anything. But if I give the key to somebody else, then there's no fun in it. So maybe if this story adds some value. I'm sure it does. Yes, thank you, Preeti. It's a Marula Diya, Preeti Toledo. Okay, so we are at around 6.13, 6.14. So if, if, if people have any specific questions about Arohi, you can also ask those. Um, also, let me, I've posted the link for that presentation in the chat. If anybody wants to go through the presentation in a, in a relaxed mode, you can just copy that link. That link is also in the email that was sent to you with the link of, the, uh, of this Zoom call. So you don't have to have to copy it. If you still have that email from where you got the Zoom link, this link was there. Yeah, so you can look up that. All these slides were there. Uh, we also have the option of visiting ROE. There are certain weeks which are uh, marked out for uh, visiting. Uh, the fun is that there are typically four or five families visiting, so it becomes even more enjoyable because then there's a larger group and and so on. So all you need to do is go to the website, check out the calendar. And once you know which week you want to visit, and that's a good idea to understand open learning because you, when you stay here, when you are in this environment, then you understand, oh, this is this is how it is actually, especially even for children or even especially for us because we are kind of, kind of little conditioned to think in a little different way. 
So yeah, there's a calendar link as well as a visit us link. Please check that. And uh, I'm just using this time also to reinforce that we have recordings of so many of these previous Saturday uh, sessions. So you can go ahead and watch those. They are all there on the website. Link is again included in the email that was sent to you with the, with the link. Right. So now more questions. That was like the advertiser's break or something. <laughs> I thought I'll do that Vijay's job. But you did it. <laughs> oh, you were ready for it. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I and have it out. Sorry, go ahead, please. Please, please go ahead. Okay, I'm just nothing. You just go ahead. I was saying I had checked out the calendar, uh, but I think it was up to uh, August or so. I don't remember. So uh, right now, with the schooling on, we have we are limited to the holidays. So there's Diwali week, there is the Christmas week, and then uh, there are the summer holidays. So I was wondering, this. Uh, are there people in Arohi doing open learning around Diwali or Christmas? Or well, you'll have to check the calendar. Uh, the calendar is available, as far as I know, till um, April next year. So it's already planned out till April. So please check. It is there. Uh, okay. I must have missed it. Then I'll check it again. Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't think there is an issue with that. And... Uh, yeah, meaning uh, you can decide. Sometimes you just need to leave your school for a week. Nothing would happen. No sky will fall, right? Earth won't stop rotating. Don't worry. We'll take no, care we'll of that. We'll end up with a lot of homework in, those, in that one <laughs> week. <laughs> Precisely. That's the whole idea. Campus is a lot of fun. They will also get a new flavor of you know doing things. Uh, I, was just I would just request here, as in, as in, as in we as a parent get stuck, you know, with this op open learning thought, just uh, in terms of our children. But it is for all of us. It's not only for our children. It's, it's you know, uh, we all can have you know, the pleasure or joy of, you know, learning or, you know, open learning, whatever you call it. And as Ratne says, we have been open learning. Uh, uh, probably, you know, uh, that doesn't surface in a way that we look at it. But uh, don't get too stuck with the child thought. Probably get beyond it and look at it as a family or you know uh, as as adults for yourself not for your child so uh, because now our daughter is not here uh, she's at campus so it doesn't mean that we stop you know uh, exploring or doing things you know we still go for such events where you know we typically we say a science ka event hai, mujhe kyu jana hai? Let, if my child is not here but me and Priti still go and we, we love doing it or we still play games at home uh, so it is not for a child it's it's for us that we are doing this and, and and that's how we'll see see you know child can join us or we can join them. so that's how it works that's my only invitation Are you code beka adhe asavri code la ratnesh ratnesh uh code beka na admitted we us oh and he's not wearing the headband but hatnim sha na ratnesh for a change there is a new line on zoom you are you are unmuted Sorry, 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 my you bad. You are not on mute. <laughs> sorry, 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 my bad. Yeah, no problem. That's why I shared my story of uh, learning one and a half years ago. Something about emotional this thing or learning about myself. That's why I shared. Otherwise, yeah. So I was also thinking that maybe as the first steps. Uh, we could, uh, I mean, I could join uh, the online platform of Arohi because I am an open learner today for sure. I keep exploring things at a much more rapid pace than I was ever doing before. Uh, and right now, so my, uh, the children have so far, they, it's like a mix. They enjoy the school so far. No, no, neither of them says that we don't want to do this. In fact, they get scared that their mother is sometimes crazy and talks about taking them out of school. So they say, we are here, we are happy right now. For so far, so good. So I was thinking that I start and maybe Pranav joins me and we start as open learners and we, so that we start progressing and let it fall on their ears. So as a family, we think that there is an alternate. It's not that there is only this way or that way, uh, but not only think about enrolling our children into a different form of learning, but we start with ourselves and we join as open learners. Welcome to Sapiens Club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just to again tell a story like how Preeti was telling. Uh, uh, in our case, also, our daughter initially used to go to school 
she went till actually fourth standard and uh, she was very happy with school she was very happy with her friends there she was an a plus student her teachers were very happy her principal was very happy the only people who were not happy with her, her being in school were we the two parents okay we were not happy you know why not because there was anything wrong with the school but because she was getting a plus in everything and that was bad news for us he says no 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 there is something seriously wrong how can somebody get a plus in everything that means learning is all topped off right is that what it is no 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 so we we went to the school and it, it, we started first discussions with her that we would like her to explore open learning uh, for about uh, you know 9 or 10 months which had just started the fifth standard then we went to a school and said we would like to do this and the principal saying what is wrong with you are you mad or whatever you are taking your jet child out she is an a plus student she is this she is that we said okay if, if she does not like it after 6 months will you take her back she said yeah 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 we'll take her back okay we said good thank you very much we are taking her away and that's it <laughs> so, and you must have not i mean i'm just curious so now you have created such a support system around for people who are afraid <laughs> of making a mistake but what was the support system when you started them nothing nothing the child all. was the support system wow so okay. everything every day in the morning we'll we will all sit together and ask her what do you want to do today and she had 100 million ideas and when she started realizing that all my 100 million ideas are implementable and then there are people out there not necessarily us but there are people out there to help support learn and explore and so on she was thrilled and, and and obviously initially she must she one of her major objection was i'll miss all my friends but then she later on realized no she doesn't necessarily have to miss them because she can anyway still go and uh, play with them interact with them in fact she can make far more friends because she'll make a different set of friends in the morning different set of friends in the afternoon and different in the evening right so uh, that itself opened up but be, only because she actually could experience it and then there was no reviewing that decision again because she was like totally into the flow she was much flowing much faster than us so just just to give you an idea that uh, sometimes it's it's not so much about it it's more about wanting to explore something you know the, the very idea that schooling can stop us from exploring life somehow cringes me I mean, how can a system say that don't explore life? If I say to the school that I'm going for a one month holiday, school will say, no, 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 you can't go. What about homework? What about projects? What about exams? I'll say, come on, my life is not about projects, exams, homework. My life is about living. If you don't allow me to live, how do I, how do I work that out? Either the schools should be that open that, okay, go whenever, come whenever. But I know that that's not possible in that system, which is fine. But that itself for us, that was the whole point that, hey, uh, let's let's enjoy life that is far more important um, and then 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 actually getting stuck in this whole you know systemic uh, you can say uh, path uh, or whatever yeah so Ratnesh, i loved that line when you said that 100000 ideas are implementable that is superb means uh, Children, uh, when uh, we are in that system and in, when, when we know that there is this cycle of morning getting up and then uh, evening, night, sleep and then again get up. So, you don't really, we don't, we or children and everybody around, we don't even realize that we have these many ideas and they are implementable. But when we have time and we have mind space and we can think, then everything becomes implementable. Just yeah. like Mishti going to the vegetable seller, sitting there whole day in the in the sun, selling vegetables to people. Now, who would say that idea is implementable? But you and your daughter implemented it. So that's the whole fun of yeah. it. Yeah, and what she gains out of it is is something uh, no one, no none of us can actually quantify in in that sense. Ki you have learned this much. You know, that's the beauty of it. Okay, Pranav Santosh has something. He wants you to talk about the book Drive by Daniel Pink. So Santosh, uh, Santosh I, yeah. I don't think this is where, uh, this is not the forum I would want to talk or discuss, but I would recommend others to read because it just talks about, you know, the internal drive, motiv motiv motivation, how, you know, person functions as, as, you know, when there is a drive. So it's more to be read rather than discussed here. 
uh, or probably we can have that one-on-one -on -one discussion if you want. I can share my number with you. Sure, sure. And and since we are on that topic, if you ever want to understand motivation, just observe zero to two-year-olds. Just observe. You don't have to read any book. You have to just sit quietly in one corner and just observe what zero to two-year-olds do, how they drive their own life because they drive it completely, right? Uh, zero to one, one and a half to that age group. That they are the best motivational experts because they are totally self-driven. Thanks, Pranav. So people who want uh, to have a chat with Pranav can always connect with Pranav. Okay, maybe we have time just for one last question. We are at 6.26. No questions. Good. <laughs> so I'll okay. Use, I'll use the time. Sorry. Sure, sure, Ishita. <laughs> so uh, again, I mean, I feel again uh, my experience of the last two years. I think COVID was a time we could have explored open learning, but we did not. But if I think of the two years, I, I thought a lot of time that my daughter, elder one, spent in was on things I didn't want her to spend on, which was basically. Uh, entertainment. Uh, now, I understand entertainment is also forms of learning, but it can also be a way of whiling away time. So again, how do you draw that balance and say some things are okay, this kind, this is okay because you're learning, that is not okay. I do think that now that she's back at physical school, there is a much faster pace at which she's picking up basic subjects. Like, itna to pata hona chahiye, basic multiplication, division, I do have that feeling that a 10-year-old, itna to pata hona chahiye. But last two years, there was no progress at all happening. So how do you draw that line? Priti, you want to answer that? Or Sandhya? Lakshita, Lakshita has joined. Ah, Lakshita <laughs> is there. Yeah. Hi, Lakshita is the perfect per person to answer this. Lakshita, you know the question? No, what's the question? Okay, Actually, Ishita, the, yeah. Yeah, I, I was just saying that sometimes I don't like my daughter watching a lot of YouTube channels, which are not learning based just for entertainment. And I feel that last two years when there was a lot more freedom to decide what to do because school was only two, three hours. She did spend a lot of time watching screen when I was working and getting her way out and watching screen. And I thought that was a waste of time. So any comments on that? And I love, I, I just want to mention Lakshita, I've been seeing a lot of videos and I really like your responses. <laughs> you don't know me, but I know you. <laughs> Lakshita is famous. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's not connected. It's not connected. Well, we can hear you, Lakshita. Yeah. Okay, so what I have to say is that, you, you know, it's not that uh, you need to know the basics of everything because like over the time when you want to learn, you just end up learning it because like, you know, that's when you need it. You don't just need everything at one point of time. Like I still don't know how to do basic multiplication and division, but you know, I survived, I can go to shops, I can do stuff without it also. And for the entertainment thing, well, it's like all of us have periods where, you know, we just want to watch something and we don't want to do anything else. Eventually we get out of it because it gets boring and we actually want to do stuff. So I wouldn't be too worried about that. And like, especially when you're like new to open learning or like you just dropped out of school, it's also overwhelming because now you have the freedom to do anything that you want, the things that you couldn't do before. And, you know, you just end up not doing anything at all because it's hard to take in. So it takes time. All right. Thanks, Lakshadam. 
Right. So, yeah, I I think uh, I think she she made, she kind of put it uh, in 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 a beautiful way. But I I, I think the key to me lies in uh, in the child realizing that ha huh, I can now do what all I want to really do. Then entertainment kind of diffuses or or gets its own corner only. Then it doesn't become center stage. But when when everything is against my wishes, then the only then whenever I get the opportunity, the first thing I run towards is the is the digital device. But when I have many exciting things to do, then why would I go to uh, you know when when my work is my entertainment, and and I and I'm, I'm and I'm valued for that work, not for what something else prescribes. I think then it's more more spontaneous, more. Uh, then, then you don't need to kind of draw lines any which way. So in some ways, I think uh, all all of us, children, adults, see, when, when I have time, let's say I have a free Sunday, I will watch a movie. Why not? But sometimes even on a Sunday, I don't watch a movie, but I can watch a movie on Wednesday because Sunday I had a lot of things to do. So in the same way, you can say, oh, I'm leading my life, you know. In the same way, children are fairly capable of leading their life when they start realizing Ah, this is what I really, really want to do, and I can do it, and it's valued, and I'm valued for what I'm doing, not, not necessarily just getting, uh, you know, so-called multiplications. <laughs> so yeah, uh, okay, let's end with that thought. Uh, but something to talk about with your with your children that that is what open mm -hmm. learning is all about. It's it's taking your own life by the horns. It's like catching your own horns and leading you yourself. And, and that's the beauty of it. Yeah. So we'll pause here and uh, most welcome. Please join us again any Saturday. Every Saturday we are there and we can have more conversations, more discussions. Uh, yeah. And uh, thank you. Thank you for being with us and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.